Oh, hello there. In today's video, we're gonna be building a massive flying wing and flying it. We're gonna be testing out its performance and uh, that's all really, it's nothing too special. Anyways, let's get started building. <laughs> Here's a technical overview of the aircraft. This huge 100 inch flying wing was built with only four sheets of foam board from my local dollar store. Inside this pod here is the brain. A Spectrum AR410 receiver. 
This receiver controls two of these 9 gram servos for the elevons. This 40 amp ESC runs this powerful 660 kV Emacs motor, which swings a huge 11 inch folding prop. I chose to use a folding prop because as the motor turns off, the propellers fold back, creating less drag. Also, when landing, it has a less chance of breaking off. This plane is powered by a 2300 milliamp forest lipo from Tattoo. I'd rather use a 3S lipo, but this is what I had. This battery just slides in here. I didn't design it part around the battery, but I, I, it was lucky, I guess. And it also keeps the pins from coming out, which holds the power pot in place. My goal for this project is to have it fly, of course, but also have a 30 minute flight time at least. My only concerns for this plane is that this servo right here was making some funky noises and also the stabilizing fins might be too small. All I have to do now is fly it. Wait, why did that jumping teleportation trick work? Oh well, I guess I just... Ah, what the heck? Oh, I'm already here. Oh, okay, that's convenient. Just checking all the controls. There's some moisture on it, so I don't know how that's going to affect the flight performance. <clears throat> so let me explain what went wrong. The reason this maiden flight failed was because of me. I decided to change my plans last minute and launch it from the fuselage and not the wing. As I said earlier, the propeller is very large and spinning at high RPMs. It hit my arm, causing the propeller to break off. This in turn caused the motor to become unbalanced and vibrate the fuselage very violently. This allowed the pins to become very loose and let the power pod be flung off. Upon impacting the ground, I learned that this airframe is very strong. The wing that you may have seen flexing earlier it has no visible damage and the only things I needed to replace were the sides of this fuselage here that were bent quite a bit uh, this cover here and glue back a little bit of those wing chips all we need now is to find a calm sunny day Right now, live on oh. under a state of emergency. Oh. Oh. Wait, there's that. It gets the name of the Pineapple the Express. The powerful bomb cyclones in so-called Pineapple we'll Express are wrong. The show the show the the high winds, winds and heavy rain will make this world. Oh. 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 years. We're talking about oh. flooding, washed out roads, hillsides, collapse. Oh. Well, to six weeks later. This time around, I'm gonna be putting the battery a little bit more upwards in the pod, cause when I was doing glide tests at home, it was a little tail heavy. So checking the controls once again. Safety second.
the airplane has been retrieved. There's only some minor damages here. Some but other than that, it's good. Yeah. Upon inspecting further, I noticed this little tear right here. Here's those crinkles. The fins surprisingly didn't break off. But I noticed in flight that, yeah, the, the fins were too small and having the all instability. Also, it's like it was. I saw it was slightly tail heavy, so I'm gonna put it further up the battery. Okay, let's do it again. Sorry for the noise, but I got my car running so I can plug in my hot glue gun. So, this time, this one crease there, this came a little detached and also this fell off. Also, the power pod was pushed like really inward. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna glue it down. Gotta fly into destruction. Hold up. You might be asking, why am I attaching strands of yarn to its wing? Well, to answer that, let me demonstrate. Since I do not have any fancy aerodynamic simulator, let's use some hot cocoa. Visualize these marshmallow particles as air molecules and this spoon as our aircraft's wing. Right now, our wing is parallel to the oncoming air. Watch how the air interacts with our wing. As you may notice, the air passes over the wing smoothly. This is beneficial because it reduces the drag on the aircraft. I'll talk more on how drag works in a separate video. Now pretend our wing is in at an extreme angle of attack. The angle of attack is the angle at which an object faces an oncoming fluid, in this case air. How does this new orientation affect the airflow? Well now, the air has detached from the surface of the wing. This causes turbulent airflow and a loss of lift, creating a phenomenon known as a stall. A stall is when an aircraft has a massive reduction of lift, causing it to literally fall out of the sky. This is bad for obvious reasons. So back to our question, why did I attach yarn to my airplane? Since we can't put our wind into a pool of hot cocoa, we use yarn to help us visualize how the air interacts with our aircraft as it slices through the air. So the reason that this plane crashed is because the scone here probably snapped the spar, caused the wing to fold over. That's what I think happened. Let's see if it's still recording. Yep, the phone is still recording. All right, very strong phone. Got an otter box. from that. Elevon still work. Motor still work. Um. Uh, 
Oh, the motor got unplugged, that's why. Okay. That was a good flight. Give me a So it's the next day. So it turns out the wings here are perfectly fine. I'm thinking of reusing them and making them as a glider. So as we can see, the wing snapped right here where the phone was facing. I designed the airplane just to carry the weight of the airframe itself, not to carry a phone. So I think that's the reason the plane crashed. The phone was too heavy, so it snapped the spar on the other side. And see how it just ripped out. This probably happened when it impacted the ground. But everything's still is everything's totally fine. The electronics are fine. Oh, oh okay. The electronics are perfectly fine. So I took all the tape off that was holding the phone down in place during the flight and I noticed that the wing came off this edge of the foam board very cleanly where the glue was. So the glue was the failure point. Here's the part that, in, that hit the ground. And notice how it's this edge, this part of the wing that, with all the yarn on it, that snapped. For the last flight, I was doing a quick little test spinning the airplane around me really fast and I was touching out all the different levels of attack and I think that was putting a lot of stress on the wing and that must have added to the reason why it snapped. Fortunately, the only broken things are the foam, which is easily replaceable and it's cheap. So the only thing this crash cost me was my time. On that last flight, I didn't actually expect the plane to fly. I thought I was just gonna nose dive in the ground with that added weight. So it surprised me a lot. Although there are many mishaps along the way, we still learned a lot though. This project was really fun. And I hope to do more projects like these in the future. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.